Oh, there you go. I got the mask going. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to Art for Everyone podcast, where we give a intellectual and a not so intellectual talk about uh, art. Uh, you want to take it away? You want to introduce our first guest? Michael? Yeah, so everybody, welcome to the show. Today, our guest is Jason Humphrey of Original Ink Art. So we'll introduce him in just a second. We'll have Jason give you a little bit of his background, but first I got to give a shout out to our sponsors who make the show possible. So this week our show is sponsored by Wonka Gallery. Wonka is my go-to place for getting my artwork framed in San Diego. So I highly recommend them. And then our other sponsor for today's show is Edelman Fine Art, who is my primary gallery in Little Italy. So I would love for you to go check them out on Kettner. But alas, uh, I'm excited to bring on Jason Humphrey, who has a show up right now. I actually went to one of his openings this past week. And so, Jason, go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us who you are. Share a little bit of your background. All right. My name is Jason Humphrey, um, also known by the professional brand Original Ink Art. My background has just always been art. Like as a kid, got away from it through a stint in the Navy and then returned to it upon my wife finding out my love for it. So... I pursued, you know, doing different shows for a long time, and then the hard work paid off, and so I'm doing art full time now. And tell us where your current there. show is. Oh, so I have a current show up at um, Woods Realty in Mission Hills. Really cool guy. Um, all about the arts, all about promoting arts. It was funny because when I was talking to him, he had mentioned your name. And I was like, oh, yeah, you really are in the art scene. Everybody knows Michael, you know, a really cool guy. It's, it's, it'll be up um, through December. They'll do another, I believe, reception in December. I don't have the exact date on me, but I put, I post it on my social media and stuff. And he's it's, it's just a good guy, you know, giving local artists time to kind of shine out here in San Diego. It gives them a three-month running show. It gives them, like, three receptions. So it's really, really cool. Yeah, I love that too. I did a show at Woods Real Estate a while back and it's a three month exhibition. You get three receptions. He lets you change up the work. And yeah. I think that that's such a wonderful thing when you have these local community businesses supporting the local artists because it's it's a tough go for us sometimes. Exactly. Exactly. You know, um, it's no easy task being an artist, man. You know that. And then to have like the thing that I love about it is like when people are really genuine about it, because he's gaining nothing out that but giving you exposure. He's not taking anything off sales or anything. You know, it's just, you know, he said he just always loved um, art and just likes to give that promotion to people. So I even told a couple of other um, local artists about it and they came to the last exhibition. So, you know, I'm the kind of guy, if I find out something good that's going on, I'll try to spread the word as well, you know. So Vinny, not to not to threaten you whatsoever, but so we got this real estate company showing artwork. So you're in real estate. Maybe we got to start having you host some art shows. No, I, I mean, I, I think I mean, I think there's an idea, right? And I, and I do, I do appreciate um, the stuff stuff you're saying, and I and I think when you look at the world, you give enough people what they want, you'll get what you want, right? And I would assume not not knowing the full structure. I know you've kind of talked about it before, Michael, with with Woods. Um, it's going to bring those eyes that can basically purchase those kind of paintings, but also might bring those eyes to want to purchase property, right, or sell property, right. So it's I yes, I think it's a goodness of his heart, right? Because but it's also there's hey. You get my name out there, I'll get your name out there. I mean, I do a similar thing with basically my podcast and, and this podcast. It's help, you know, I don't make anything off of the podcast, but also too, it helps get the name out there, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So I think yeah. that's the way of kind of kind of looking at it, right? I mean, it's it's uh there's no not direct correlation, but I mean, the more you're helping someone else out, usually they're gonna help you out. Yeah, it also kind of raises the question too, if you're if I'm playing devil's advocate, is is there really anything that is ever altruistic because even when we do good things that help other people it makes us feel good so it, it kind of uh, it, it's an interesting thing to think about from a philosophical perspective mm -hmm. and then for today our topic was going to dive into how other artists are not your competition and why ours should support each other but Vinny, i'm also going to want to tie you into this because i'm curious in your industry because i've noticed a lot of correlations i think Although there are differences, but there's a lot of correlations, the life of an artist versus the life of a realtor. So I'm curious if 
in your industry, if realtors look at other realtors as competition or if you try to work off of each other. So uh, I think that this is going to be a fun topic for today. I think it, it it matters at least for 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 me, right? When you when you switch your mindset coming from scarcity to abundance, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a big big group of people that probably go, you know what? If I give a shout out to this realtor, right? That's taken away from from me, right? Yet I f I feel confident in my worth, mm -hmm. so I know that it doesn't take away anything from me. Right. If I say positive things about someone else, if I truly believe it and truly respect the person. Right. But I think it'd be the same thing for the artist. Right. I mean, it's right. You you have to have a confidence in your work. If you don't have a confidence in your work, you, you're thinking that one person that you're going to give a positivity about is going to steal your business and that one deal you're going to get. Yeah. yeah, I think there's definitely some truth there. And Jason, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say I could. um with the art and the real estate, I can see it kind of like if you know somebody with the real estate and you're kind of cool and stuff. But I could see it actually being not exactly a competition, but it's a little it's a little different, you know, than with the artists. Like with us, I've just experienced like a lot of good positive things with other artists. And I've also experienced like like you say, some of that some of that fear. But in the situation surrounding like us i don't believe that artists should should really have that fear of each other because like to the point that you said if you're really you know confident about your work right and i want to add if you're really confident about your work and you're 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 producing something that's original and true to you you're not really going to have any any like direct competition if you're just going to run out here and just blatantly repeating a process or doing something that's hot and trending, then, you know, you kind of run into those, those, those competition things or stigmas. But well, a lot of artists that I've known and have come to like, you know, have good relationships with, we don't really view each other as competition because our work is so different. And it's more of just like, Hey, if I find an opportunity, I'll help you and you can help me. And even more than that, like, let me just come and show up and support you, you know, and just and just bring my my support to your project because it's, it's not just all about money. Sometimes it's really about just wanting to see like a familiar face or explain some new work or you know get like a um. I guess a lot of artists will kind of like really bounce off each other with creative. Like I look at some of micro stuff and I can't do any of that, but it just makes me so curious of like fluid medium and stuff. And I'm like. If I could find a way to put a little bit of that in my work, I think it would be cool. But I'm not going to sit and see him having success and just start trying to copy his work. Like, that's not that's not cool. Man. Well, but you're talking about who you are now. Right. I mean, let's say when you just got going. Right. Let's and I'll use the, the idea of let's say you're just getting going the business. Right. Mm -hmm. And you see someone else. <laughs> we talked about last time. Right. Or maybe the second time before someone sell a banana for let's say half a million dollars, whatever, right? You're like, you're like, gosh, dang, man, I put all my time in this artwork and this guy yeah. just sold a banana for 500,000. What, like, God, yeah, I, I despise this person. Kind of same thing, like in real mm -hmm. estate, like when you're just getting going, you mm -hmm. see this person just sell like this, this massive property. And you're like, that person's the idiot. Like I've talked to the person, they have no clue what's going on. Like how do they do it? Right. So right. the correlation, I think when you just get going might be there, but I think mm -hmm. as you age, you realize don't judge my, I mean, insides with people's outsides, you know, like it yeah. evolved. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely speaking from a from an evolved perspective. But even even as getting going, a lot of the things that I have going now are because of what other artists taught me or led me to. You know, mm -hmm. so so even like the show circuits that I kind of do, the places that I travel to show my art, I wouldn't know about those places if it wasn't for some other artist saying, hey, man, your stuff is looking really, you might want to try up here in uh, up north California. They really like stuff like that. Or you might want to try this show or, or shoot your stuff out here. And so I was fortunate to have some of those kind of occurrences where I've also been on the other side of it where, like, I'm in a group show and seeing everybody kind of mingling and, and kicking and stuff. And I come in and then I find out, like, beginning of the group show like two of my paintings sold and then the other artist man was just like so cold one i'm kind of i'm black so you know i'm already trying to like fit in you know to the just the other racial 
um, people that were there. Like, I mean, and it was just like hard. It was just like, I feel like, like, damn, like, is this what the art world is? Like, you know, we're all together until I sell something. And now you guys are just kind of like, it was just like really funky for me. And my wife was in this because my wife always comes and supports me. And so we're sitting at this, at this reception, dude, I got like two hours left and we're just in the corner, like drinking beer and like, like, I don't know if you because people just wasn't like fucking with me. And I was like, man, this is like, and so I was, I was really like kind of mortified. And I said, I'm just going to sit up and do it on my own. But it, art's not really something that you, you necessarily want to do. You want to have another artist friend. You want to have other ideals to bounce from. So meeting other artists that weren't like that really kind of helped me. Like, okay, so it's not everybody. Like, and like you say, it's people who are comfortable in their work or people who have been there. You know, it's always people that have been doing it. And you never know anybody's background. So you can see someone's success and say, hey, man, well, how, how in the hell is this? Do-? But, you know, you don't know what the background up to that person achieving that success was. That person might have been at Starbucks for like 10 years before he had that big break and got in that gallery, you know? So I just never judge. And I'm always like, you know, open hearted. But I guess just with me, I kind of just really go by like energy. That's been like the best filter for me, you know? Because the energy is something that you really can't fake. People, you know, especially California, Hollywood, stuff like that, you get a lot of smiles and promises and oh, I want to reach out to you about this. I pass my business card, man. And if I hear from them, I'm, I hear from them. If I don't, I just leave it at that. I mean, that's just the way I kind of roll with it because, you know, I show, I know it's a lot of people like, like to talk and up talk stuff. And then I've reached out to people and then they act like they don't even remember, you know, oh, oh I'll get right back to you. And so, you know, I just kind of go by the energy and the people that are real with my ask me, like kind of leave me an email. And if they leave that contact, then I'll usually follow up and it's something real. Yeah, some people find it hard to believe when I tell them that I may pursue 50 opportunities to close a single deal or something like that. It's like the, mm-hmm. the, the ratio of, of successes to, I don't want to call them failures, but no-goes, it's very disproportionate. Yeah. And I think that I'd be doing a disservice as an artist to disillusion people or, or convey a, another thing about it. But we, we do this because we love it. And when you're getting going on this journey, like Jason was talking about, if you run into these crowds, these cliques, these groups that make you feel excluded, it can really harden you to the experience and make you believe that, oh, this is what the world is, which is part of why we created this podcast so that we can kind of open up the dialogue. And when Jason reached out to me last week, even though I don't really drive at night anymore, I don't really go out, I don't do anything, I never, never leave the house. He sent me an invite. He said, hey, I got a show. The show was only down the street from me. And I decided, I'm like, I'm going to be there. I'm not even going to tell him that I'm coming. Because I, I know that when people tell me they're going to come to my show, a lot of times they don't show up. So I'm like, I'm not even going to say anything. I'm just going to show up because he's probably expecting that I, not that he thinks poorly of me, but he's probably thinking that I'm not going to show up. And I just want to surprise him because I had a show just a few days prior mm-hmm. and it was a group show. So there were a couple of people that showed up, but nobody that I invited. And wow. I have a reel right now on Instagram that's kind of blowing up that I did when I was sitting in my car after going to my opening where it talked about how I've had openings where nobody that I knew showed up. I've had exhibitions where I didn't sell a single painting. I've spent thousands of hours on pieces that nobody has ever seen. I've been given every reason to quit, but I will not. And that is why I'm successful as an artist. And so that's always kind of been my mentality of it's on me. It's not about anybody else. And I think that when you're dealing with the bottom, you compete. But when you're dealing with the top, you collaborate. And for me, like Jason was also saying, it's about soul. Like when you put your heart and your soul into your work, nobody can ever take that away. So even if somebody like Nick Bolton and one of the, the first guests that we had, he has work that I would say is in the family of what I do. And even mm-hmm. though he's been doing this for far less time, his numbers are probably much better than mine. His social media numbers blow mine away. But there's no jealousy on my part. I'm happy to see him succeeding because I don't want anybody to be less. I want people to push me to be more. And I think Mm -hmm. that that's the mentality that has made it for me to be in this position to do the things that I do. And and, and it's led to my successes that just like, okay, you know what? I got to wake up and I got to do a little more today. You know what? Things aren't working. I got to figure this out. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it's, um, it's motivating when I see, um, other artists, especially artists that I know like blow up or get gallery representation or, you know, doing the Basel thing, you know, because art's not one of those things where you just go from here to here. You know, that journey can go so many different directions and then you just get on different paths and you find different ways to do it. So for me, 
I'm still figuring a lot of things out, but like I said, I'm fortunate enough to have a lot of people connect with my uniqueness as an artist, you know? And so it, it feels good to, to it's, it's really no feeling like literally going somewhere and meeting someone for the first time and they just zone in on one of your paintings and then you kind of tell them the story behind it. And they're just like, what? The, oh my God, I already liked it. But now, you know what I mean? That's what we kind of live for as artists and men. And that kind of feeling will keep me going. And it may be a show or two or sometimes where it doesn't happen. But then when it does happen, it's genuine and it's real. And it's like, it's something I'm going to do anyway. So to do it and put it out there into the universe and let everything do its thing and it work out, it's, it just takes that. I say the hardest part for artists is to really have that that confidence to to put your stuff out there even if you don't think you're at your best you know to just really get it out there and to take that forward because if you don't you're not going to get the feedback and you're not going to you all you, you never want to be sitting up just wondering what if what if what if you know so i think that's that was the hardest part for me is just i'm kind of naturally like an introvert but getting it out there and then you know seeing what people's feedback was i used to just do all black and white art just pointless that's why it's original ink art. i used to be really, really just work in ink but by talking to other artists, seeing other artists find out different styles and experimenting and stuff, you just never know where that journey is going to take you. But but being positive and having it come from the heart, it'll all work out. Yeah, and that vulnerability, I think that that's what people really connect with. So yeah. I think that even if you are struggling or trying to find your voice as an artist, sharing that journey of, hey, I'm lost right now, but I'm trying to find myself. That's something that people can connect with. And I think that other artists connect with that. And... I think that it's a disservice when we look at people like influencers or some of the top performers on things. And we just see like the glory moments mm -hmm. and we don't see the struggle behind it. The thousands of hours that go on yeah. behind the scenes for the 10 minutes we maybe get of spotlight for a show. Mm -hmm. And that's why sometimes it is tough when our friends don't come to our shows and things like that. It's there are ways for people to support us for free, yeah. but artists really need to start kind of helping each other out and supporting each other, I think, and, and working off of each other. And I feel like if we were to do that, then nobody has to starve. Then we can all eat. There's room at the table for everybody. Definitely. Definitely. And I, I and I'll admit, man, I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of it. I've, I've gone to, you know, artist shows. I've gone, driven up to LA for, for a gallery opening or two, you know, and, but like, I've gotten like a little inundated myself with like not showing up. Like when I called you or hit you up, and you came, I was like, wow, I just told this dude about this yesterday. So that was big for me. And then I was like, okay, so why have you not gone? And you know, he had a group show open. And so I was like, okay, put it on the list. Like next time Michael has something, like I'm there. You know what I mean? Because it's just like, I actually, I had a genuine good time just seeing you and talk. Because me, me and your conversation is going to be different than me and a potential collector or somebody else. You know what I mean? Just looking yeah. at the art. But we both know what we put behind the scenes into it and stuff. And, hey, where are you going with this? What, what are you into right now and stuff? So it's, you're right though. If, if we as artists support each other more, it just creates more opportunities. You brainstorm more, you get to bounce ideas off each other more. And if nothing else, just showing up and having that friendly, familiar face, man, is always a good thing, especially when you're doing any kind of opening, for sure. Yeah, sometimes as artists, we're not really asking for a lot. We're not, we, of course, we love it when people buy our pieces, but we also appreciate when people just show up to see us as we expose ourselves because exactly. we put so much time and energy into what we do. And then we share it with you trying to, to help people. And so when nobody kind of shows up, sometimes we do, even if we are successful, even if we are sometimes confident people, it can shake the confidence a little bit. And that's yeah. part of the journey too. Yeah. Well, so being that you're, 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 you both kind of talked about how emotionally charged you are towards your art, right? Mm -hmm. And you're in a vulnerable place when you're, I guess, allowing people to look at your art and things like that, trying to sell it. How do you take basically people that talk shit about your art? Oh, man, it's, you know, you're, uh, it, it's a friend of mine um, recently told me about a concept. And I can't remember the name of it, but I think it's called the bell curve, right? So he was saying how he, he's really analytical guy, likes to figure stuff out. He was saying how if you look at a popular post on Instagram, how somebody will have like 2 million followers, and then you look at all the comments, a certain percentage, say it might be 200,000 comments, 
a certain percentage, like I think like 75 or something, maybe like positive, right? But then you will have a certain percentage, like at least 20% or something, that'll be like negative. Like they just know it's all. So you're always going to have somebody that's not going to like feel what you're doing or whatever, but you just have to know your work isn't for everybody. The good thing about um, being an artist is that I haven't really come across that too much with somebody just come blatantly like tell me like, oh man, this looks like shit. Something. I'm 6'4 and I'm 250. So if somebody's <laughs> looking at my work and they don't like it, they might probably keep it to themselves. You know what I mean? Because I'm towering over most people that come to my shows. But I, I do have a, a friend of mine that um I looked at her Instagram story about two weeks ago and I was just horrified, mortified. Somebody had came into her booth at a, a art fair and told her, this picture looks like somebody vomited on it. I could do this at home. And she was, and you know, she's she does a lot of um, murals and stuff. So she has a lot of art and she's pretty successful. But she said it just like, like tore to pieces because she didn't know like what to say. And I was just like, wow. And I was sitting there like, thinking like I've had some negative comments, but you know, it's just something that like most people who tell you something like that, first of all, you're at the show or you're in my booth and you're looking at my work. So a lot of times they're just not creators. And so you're taking like a negative comment from somebody who really can't do what you do. Even if it's a, a, a say a curator or a critic, that's all it's going to be. It's going to be a critique. It's going to be something that you can't let, bring you down you just you know I, I basically for me i guess i get way more positive than negative so it's not anything that at this point in my career would really bother me much it would just depend on the level of disrespect like i'm not just gonna let you just sit in disrespect you can say what you want or whatever but it's gonna be something and then you're probably gonna leave and you know i won't see you you won't see me but if it's like if you're just being disrespectful or something i'll probably just ask you to leave or like whatever dude you know like Gordon, I, had man, a show. <laughs> I had a yeah, show at show. Ray probably 10 years ago, and mm. I know exactly where I was sitting on the bench. And mm. I remember a couple came in and the boyfriend asked the girlfriend, what do you think of the art? And she said, I think they're a little, the titles are a little much for what they are. 10 years later, I can verbatim remember what she said. Wow. So I do. And the thing was, is they were really complex geometric works that required hundreds of hours of layering and stuff. Mm. But she just, in a snap judgment, said a little much, or the titles are a little much for what they actually are. Just completely mm. dissected my life thousands of hours in a, in a moment. And it stuck with me. So this is a thing that I'm constantly having to deal with. And, and I feel like I've gotten better at it. And I think it kind of depends on like where my mental health is and how I'm doing emotionally at any mm. given time. I had, like I said, a video on Instagram that just took off in the past 24 hours and it went up to like 50,000 views. And we were talking about this with Nick Boltman a couple of weeks ago, that as soon as you hit that next level in views and you start reaching a new audience, that mm -hmm. new audience is going to be a series of reactions different from what you're used to. And so mm -hmm. when I started seeing those comments, I'm like, oh, okay, we hit that next level with this post. Yeah. And I have to be prepared for that because if I ever want to reach the next level and the next level and the next level, I'm going to be getting more of those comments of people that just want to dismiss me and dismiss my work. Oh yeah. The truth is though, is that anybody worth their salt, anybody actually doing something mm -hmm. is not going to be making those comments because anytime I have just casually perused the person making the comments, mm -hmm. it's the same type of person every single time. And I can tell you that they are not doing better than I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's, there's, I had to pull myself back from like um, sometimes responding to some of the negativity. Like you click on a person's profile, man, they'll have one picture. It'll be a private profile. Yep. They'll have three posts. They'll have like four followers and they're following like five. And it's just like, it's a troll account. It's like you literally set up an account to come on here and like troll people. So, you know, it's, it's always going to be some kind of negative stuff you have to deal with in everything, man. But, like I say, that at the core, at the core of our mission, we're creating from our soul. It's a soul journey. Just really even making the decision.
to say, hey, this is what I want to do. I want to be an artist and then start following that path. It's a hard one, man, because, you know, it, it's it's not paved in gold. You have to grind. You have to paint. You have to obviously have some people like your stuff if you're trying to make some money off of it. But when you get those feelings, when you get that person that buys a print from you and then comes back in six months and commissions an original because they graduated law school. And, you know, it's those things like that, like, wow. So you wasn't just buying a print because you be like, all right, you were like, I'm investing in this dude. As soon as I get my money, I'm going to invest in this dude. And stuff like that feels good. And stuff like that is genuine, you know? So for all the genuine encounters and, and homes that I have my work in, I'm always appreciative. You know? For those that don't like my work, people will pass right by my art if they like like landscape art or something. And that's fine. Art is subjective. So you're always going to have people that really like your work and people that kind of maybe aren't moved by it. And it's just filtering through that process and not taking certain things personal. You know? What for each piece, right? On your collages, because it seems like most, I mean, I looked on your Instagram and I mean, your stuff that you sent over, most of it's kind of like a, a bigger picture and then a kind of collage base to kind of like um, give the base of it, I guess. Like that. I don't know the best way to describe it. Right. Mm -hmm. Is there is each piece in the collage like does it have like a, a common theme? Like I'm looking right now at the background. If you're watching this on YouTube. I just I just noticed probably about like 20 minutes, 10 minutes ago, Mickey Mouse, it looks like or Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Right there, yeah. and so and I was like, oh, maybe a Mickey Mouse. It, it kind of bases off because the whole thing is the American flag. Maybe mm -hmm. everything that's American is in the collage. Is that like? I don't know. Well, that's, that's a good question. So for me, with with my hand painted collages, so each piece I will like hand tear or hand cut watercolor paper, and I'll paint those pieces individually. Sometimes, like maybe two or three coats. I just lay out a table of pieces and I create them. And then when I go to collage them, each one kind of tells a story. So with that piece, this happened during the, that flag was made during the year of COVID. And so everything was shut down. It was really strange. And I remember when I was creating that, they said that for the first time in like, I think it might've been like 15 or 20 years, like Disneyland was going to be shut down. And I was like, no way. So I had a, a drawing I was doing of Mickey Mouse and I was like, wow. So this is really, um, I guess, you know, as an artist, sometimes it's our job to kind of put the news or whatever in our work. I was like, well, this is like really like serious. I'm in California. I've never heard about Disneyland being shut down. So I took that picture of Mickey and I did a little whitewash paint over it. And I was like, I'm going to work this into the flag because whoever buys this flag, I'll explain that. When they ask why is this in here, I'll say because this is the American flag, you know, in America. But this is the first year during this COVID that, you know, Mickey Mouse was actually not able to go to work. It was actually shut down. And so the people, when I explained that to them, when they bought, they bought it immediately. They were from, and they, they were from like Paris. They were buying it for their son, but they just loved the story behind it because COVID was such a, a really weird time for artists. We couldn't go anywhere. We couldn't show. And for like the first, I think like two or three months of COVID, I wasn't creating anything. I was in a straight slump, but this was going on. And so I would keep looking at it, keep looking at it. But each piece, this kind of tells a story, but each piece is different too, you know, like, so where everything in here may kind of relate to America. Sometimes I'll write little words into, I'll put line 11 in some of my flags. Sometimes I'll write like one nation, but it just depends on the art. Some of, some of the collage pieces are really a bunch of just whimsical abstract pieces I create, but then they'll just come together to tell the whole. So it just depends. Do you, do you ever have people that like, cause like I'm a big movie buff and that kind of stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. So I heard people talk about like the, the movie get out, it's a horror movie. And they're like, yeah. okay, the reason why you did this is because of this and this, do you ever have someone look at your art and go, okay, I can see why he did this. He put this piece in there because of, then you're like, oh man, you must be high or something's yeah. going on. Cause I, I had no idea of that. Like, well, you know, I tell people a lot of times people will say like, um, they'll see like an abstract shape or something. And they're like, I see a hawk right here you see this hawk and i'm like yeah I'm like, did you mean to do that and i'm like no but that doesn't mean it's not there you yeah. see what you see your experience looking at my art is your experience you know but i didn't purposely put that in there like i see what you're talking about but yeah some some people will see things in there that i didn't necessarily do on purpose or consciously and i just tell them man the artist really experience my artwork really is the kind of artwork that from afar you'll see you know, like a bear or you'll see a lion. But as you get close, you'll see a lot of details. You'll see words. I use a lot of numbers. Um, 
I just like I'm a big person of like synchronicities. Like a lot of time I'll look like right now I'm looking at the time and it's two, three, four for somebody else. That won't mean anything. But for me talking right now, two and three and four is like steps. You know what I mean? It's like, like synchronicity. So I see a lot of synchronicity. And a lot of times when that happens, I'll actually like jot those down in my work or put those numbers and stuff up in there. Yeah, I love those layered complexities of your work. And it's something that I always think about too. It's like we put these Easter eggs in our work for those that are willing to dive deeper and look for the complexities and really invest the time and energy. So yeah. it's like, that. that's one of the things that artists can do is, is we give the treasures to those that are willing to dig for them. Exactly. And they appreciate it. People appreciate it. You know, people, I mean, I used to not really have a lot of stories behind my art. I used to just like to create pictures or have something nice or whatever. But when I really started ex like asking myself, like, well, what is the meaning behind this? Why do you keep drawing lions? Because I have a lot of like different lions in my work. And I was like, well, wait a minute. What do lions mean to you? And I was like, it's the strongest, strongest animal. It's like strength. It's like courage. It's like overcoming obstacles, right? And so I, I came to find out that a lot of times when I'll sit and draw a lion, it's because I'm coming from like a place of weakness. The, the picture that got me out of my slump during COVID was this big line I did called Return of the King. Because I just I just couldn't draw anything. I was just like defeated, wasn't going to the gym. I was just in a slump. And I said, I need to get back to drawing like because when this thing is over, I need to have work. And so I started drawing a line. I drew a real majestic, I put his mouth up and I put like nice, you know, colorful mane on it. And as soon as I finished that picture, I was just creating art like every day. It really had broke my streak. So some artists will have their pain and they'll put it in the in the artwork. For me, I always try to flip it into something like positive. So if I'm in a negative place, I may not necessarily draw like a negative, like really dark picture, but I'll draw something like bright and positive or something that brings me out of that negativity. That's what I say, acrylic alchemy, utilizing your, your pain, your struggle as your fuel to create something beautiful. Equivalent yeah. exchange. <laughs> That's awesome, man. <laughs> I think you said I think you said it before, and I, I guess to, to get on, or maybe someone like you were talking about um, someone paying for you to actually make a piece for them from scratch, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yeah. I forgot what, what's that word again? Uh, commission. Commission. Okay, commission. Okay. So, in the commission, and maybe you too, Michael. I mean, how much sway does the actual consumer get in the art piece? Like, hey, I, I want this dog. I want. This. I mean, like, how how like, how much? How much kind of sway did they get in the piece? So I don't know about Michael. For me, before I start any commission, I just have to make sure that the ideal that they want lines up with the type of art that I know I'm going to create. A lot of my art, like if you look at lions or even my bear, I have a lot of like abstract patterns, different things, you know. And as long as they're comfortable with that type of work, then I ask them to usually give me a list of like family names, initials, things like that. They could pick a couple of maybe primary colors they want in there. But I've been very fortunate that um, I can actually say about 95% of the people that have done commissions with me, they just tell me to run with it. They give me the things they want to see in there, like a couple of names, numbers, and things like that, words. But they're like, you know, like surprise me. Like, I just want to see your like they 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 love the fact that they haven't really seen any art like mine. So they, they pretty much let me run with it, you know. And I had I had one one person one time, man, I told him you could put some <laughs> some stuff in it. And this dude gave me a list so big that I just I just couldn't even do the picture. I was just stuck. I mean, he just kept calling, kept giving me more stuff. And I was like, this isn't it, it just wasn't gonna work. So that was the one commission. I had to walk away from it. I actually like I think it was fun to do this money or whatever. And yeah, yeah. but it, it was just over the top. I mean, I was just like, damn, you know, I asked you, I gave you a list of 10. You give me 50 words and symbols. And and it was a, supposed to be like a, a like a koi fish or something. It was just the stuff he was giving me. I was just like, oh, it's too much. It's not going to work, you know, because it's supposed to be stuff that you see as you get all up on it. Like the stuff you're giving me, I'm not even going to have room to to make it translate to a fish, except for the shape. So, <laughs> I would say I take a pretty similar approach to what Jason was describing, too. People can see the work that I do, 
And that's what I do. I work within the realm of those things, those bodies of work. So my rules are generally, this is what I do. You can give me a size. You can give me a color palette. You can give me a general theme or concept, but it's going to be in my abstract style. Right. Now, because my work is very fluid and it's less representational than Jason's work, sometimes people may be a little surprised with what they get from me. Now, I have not had anybody tell me they were unhappy with something they got aside from one time I've had one experience where somebody was not happy and they actually accused me. It was, it was during COVID mm. they accused me of intentionally damaging the box that it was shipped in. Like they actually accused me of punching oh. the box. There was a hole in the box when it arrived and they said, you punched the box. And I said, <laughs> I offered to give you your money back and I shipped it to you. Why would I punch my own, like it just made no All sense right. whatsoever. And then started having their friend get in the conversation. But I think that it was just them pretending to be their friend. So it was like <laughs> a complete weird situation. And I'm like, hey, if you're not happy with it, I offered to give you your money back. But I'm a small business during COVID that offered mm -hmm. to give you your money back. And you're leaving negative reviews about me on all these platforms. Like you went that oh, far wow. when I gave you your money back if you weren't happy with what I did. Like I tried to take the information you gave me. It was somebody that was having a lot of trouble articulating what they wanted, which is fine mm. because that gives me more room to kind of fill in the gaps. And it's like a dance, it's dialogue, it's a back and forth. And mm. I got to a point on the painting where they just couldn't make a decision. And I'm the type of person that when I'm working on one project, that's my project. I can't move on into oh, another yeah. project. I'm done with this. So yeah. not that I'm trying to rush anybody, but it's like, I need you to make a decision. Like I can't wait three weeks for you to make a decision on something before oh, I resume yeah. working on something. Yeah. So I tried to make an educated guess, kind of work through it. I really liked what the pieces look like. And mm -hmm. uh, I guess they not so much, though they never sent them back and never <laughs> asked for the refund. So I'm just like, what was the, the point of all that? But I, I feel pretty lucky in that I've only had one of those experiences because right. commissions are kind of a slippery slope for me because my work is so fluid and abstract. Mm -hmm. People may like one piece but not be able to afford it. And they'll say, well, I kind of want something in that color palette. I really like that piece. And yeah. even if I do another piece that's the same size, same color palette, because of the technique, it right. may look completely different and they may just not connect with it quite as much. And so sometimes I do feel bad and maybe, maybe I shouldn't, but sometimes I, I worry that people aren't getting what they had hoped for because I do care about people connecting with what I'm giving them. Of course. Of course, your your work is is so unique, and you know the commission is um for me it's 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 necessary. I mean, because sometimes they come out of the blue, and it's like wow, okay. As long as I could jive with the ideal, I'm with it. But what also happens is, like I, right now, I have a good friend of mine, man. I mean, he was actually there, Michael. The um Peter, you met the guy that came with the um with the wheelchair. Yeah, yeah, he's very kind, yeah. nice guy. Commissioned me for a piece for his wife, and it was supposed to be for their anniversary, right? Paid me in full, right? So I'm like, oh, right, I'm a busted out, Peter. I get led into a show up north. I'm like, okay, well, it's cool. I could do this when I get back from this show. Then I got the call from um, Michael Woods. I had forgot about that because they asked me about that show like a year ago. And so they called me and said, hey, are you going to have these pieces for October? And I was like, and so I'm looking, I'm like, oh, yeah. So I usually have like a big reserve, you know, of art. And so I, all those pieces that were there, a couple of older pieces, some new stuff, but like that was all my backup art. So then I went up north, did well. So I had another show like that next week. So I, you know, I'm paying for these jury shows. So I can't just go out there have half a boot so i'm literally painting and getting stuff framed to go back up there then i got into another show and then another one that i thought it was just like i ended up getting into like three art shows that i wasn't planning on and i had to keep creating work for them and it really like almost caused it this dude paid full he didn't pay like 25 percent or pay, paid me for the full thing and i ended up missing his anniversary date and oh. then, yeah, and he wrote hey, hey, and I was just like, and I'm trying to explain to him, and I'm like, damn, well, you know, I can I can give you the money back, man, you know, whatever, man. 
he came over my house and came to the studio. And I'm telling you, it was like the scene from The Godfather. I was scared, man. I was just like, I did not want to mess my friendship up over my, you know, but it's, but it's something, Michael, that never in my 15, 20 years of doing it, I've just never had anything snowball like yeah. that, right? Never. And I was explaining to him, like, Peter, I've never had this happen. Like, I always have enough art because if you come to my house, you'll usually see stuff on the wall. Like, my house is like a gallery of my art. All the walls yeah. were empty. And I just, I was like, dude, I just had no reserve. Like, this is how I'm making my living. Like, I appreciate you. I promise you, I'm going to bust it out. And, and, you know, he just said that, you know, he was cool, but he really felt like I had, like, shit on him at the time. And I could understand it. And I was just like, man, this is a hard lesson. So, for sure, that is something that I'm, before I take a commission, I'm going to make sure that, one, I have the time, you know, to hit the date. And, two, I won't ever take like a full like price commission paid up front again like that because I think I, I think by by doing that it made me a little um lazy. You know what I mean? Oh, really? I think I, I think I took it for granted a little bit subconsciously, like you know, okay, because it's already paid for. When I'm get 25% or something and I'm working on it because I want to get the rest of that, you know what I mean? So yeah. all these different things happen and it almost like cost me a friendship and I don't I was just like wow but everything worked out it's super cool and, and, and um, I'm finishing it up and but yeah it was it was one of those things like you know I try to take everything like it's not really a mistake if you make it a lesson but it was a big one because I was like man that could have really went ugly like in so many different ways you know how, how do you make it right if you don't mind saying so basically I just told him I said you let me know what you wanted I can give you the money back I can, and he was like no I want your work but I just want you to like that date's already passed, but I still, he has a certain plan for like how he's going to present it and everything. He's like, I still want to do it. And then just let me know what date so I can make the plans on how to present it. And so I just told him yesterday, like what the date will be. And so we're good. But yeah, that was a, that was a hard one, man. I mean, when, when everything is your fault, you know, cause, cause that's the thing as an artist, my show schedule and my other responsibilities have nothing to do with this man and his commission in his eyes. He's already paid, you know, so it's just something that I'm kind of learning from. And like, you know, commissions are, are important, but man, as an artist, you really have to. And I, and I know a lot of artists go through this and they've had backups on commissions. They had to like reassure us, but it's just something like I never want to um, like experience that again. So I would just make sure like. I've seen where artists say, like, right now, commissions are closed. And so sometimes you just have to kind of, you don't want to miss out on the money, but sometimes you literally have to just say, I can't do them right now. I have all this other stuff going on, you know, circle back. One of my policies that uh, I've always implemented is that I radically under promise and over deliver. So if I think something can get done in a week, I'll still mm -hmm. tell people four to six weeks or something like that. One, I'll give a range, yeah. but I will like quadruple at least mm. the time frame so that yeah. what happens is that when i then have it done in a week mm. it's like oh wow well ahead of schedule now what i'm hoping though is they're not thinking that i didn't put the time and energy into it right but topic of today is supporting other artists i want to help you out jason so i want to say that if you ever run into the situation again of you having a jury show or something of that nature and you have wall space I will load you up with some of mine. I'll give you a commission and, and a little bit of money because I don't get out of the house anymore and I don't do the jury show or the circuit as much anymore. And that's how you and I met. I think you and I met at Kaboo yeah. or one of the festivals. We crossed each other's paths at quite a few of the festivals because we do a lot of the same events. But yeah. I stopped doing those because the overhead was too high and I just don't have the ability to pay for the truck and the manpower doing it. So and much, the uh emotional energy that goes into doing that it's exhausting so yeah if there's ever an opportunity though that's one of the things i've been talking about is artists for these types of events it would okay. behoove them to perhaps collaborate and work together because one you can cut costs you can work off of each other you have yeah. extra manpower you can cross promote and the other thing that you and i talked about at your opening was that at a lot of these events if you have an art festival and there's 200 artists there by the time somebody gets to you, they have seen so much art that they can barely process anything. 
So if you want to get their attention, you have to be doing something different. Now, if you team up with your artist and you man the booth and you're not exhausted, maybe somebody can be live painting. Maybe you bring in a framer like Wonka Gallery or somebody like Giant Canvas so that you can have a material supplier that artists use while Mm. also attracting a collector base because collectors are, one, going to be looking at artwork. But two, you can say, hey, well, if you buy my work, Ryan over here can frame it for you. John can stretch it for you. And a collector is going to find use out of both the artist and the framer or that other vendor as well. So then all the other artists at the event, they're going to be interested in a framer. They're going to be interested in the canvas builder. So you can at least get that traffic, have a lot of people moving with sometimes psychologically is the trip to have a successful event. I like that. That's that's exactly um, what I try to do, man. You know, you you want to put everybody on, and like I use Giant Canvas. I got to check out um, Wonka Gallery. I spoke to him. He seems really cool. He has some nice frames. I've never never used them, but I'm definitely gonna um, get some stuff framed up by him this winter. You know, very fairly priced. I go to him with all my odds and end jobs. Like my thing behind me, he helps me put new wheels on my rack. So I bring him in for a lot of the. Stuff that I want help with. Sometimes when I don't want to do an installation by myself, I'll have him help me. But he always has the wildest projects going on in yeah. office because you have people from galleries and you have artists and you have people that don't know how to frame things coming to him and they're always looking for guidance. And so he always has wonky, weird projects <laughs> over at Wonka Gallery. And he's a big supporter of the artist too. No, he is. He showed me some really cool stuff he had going on in there. I mean, it was some stuff I had never even seen before, you know, the, the framing technique. And I was just, I was blown away, but, you know, I, I've never, I've never used them, but that's, I'm definitely going to make it a point to get some in. So, I, I love the way your stuff looks framed, too. I've seen your stuff at Adam, and I was like, wow, I wonder if Wonka did these. You had some really nice pieces. I think there were three long kind of square ones with the metallic frames. And Yeah, yeah, it's mirror finish. Yeah, those were nice. Do you think, I mean, talking about there's such a pain in the butt to take your stuff and track it down to an event and that, that you're going to have some virtual galleries or are there virtual galleries already? Um, you know, I'm, for me, my artwork shows better in person. Yeah. So, so even like when people see my stuff online or attracted to or they see like a advertisement or something, and they come and see my work, they're usually like, oh my God, I, I liked your work, but I just didn't know it was this, you know, I didn't know I had this much texture or this much detail. So the online stuff, I just, I believe, I've seen some virtual stuff popping up here and there. I just don't think that it'll ever replace the feeling. You mean with like goggles? Like they've had, they have it with like goggles, you put goggles on and actually go to like the gallery? I've, I've seen, I've seen that. I've seen, oh, yeah. uh-huh. you know, the, the virtual 3D stuff. I actually have a friend who's a, um, he's, he's a, he's really big into the art scene. He does a lot of like writing and reviews and he's put on, he does like curational stuff and he, he's actually a, um, an ex like programmer. So he's really savvy on the computer side and he was showing me some stuff. I mean, it's out there. It's, it's, it's some nice stuff out there, but just for me, it's just not really really my bad with my work. I don't think it's really a, a great fit for me personally. You know, I, I'm not I'm not opposed to anything, but when I think of art, I think of like showing it in person. I think of talking to people. I think of like really just the interaction more than just really showing the art, like the interaction of the different people, you know, telling me their opinions of it and me telling them the story behind it. I like the one-on-ones. That's, that's, that's the best feeling I get out of it. You're so right, too, because I've said for a long time, when you look at my art on a computer or on a social media platform, it's art. But when it's in person, Mm -hmm. it's an experience. Right. You see the nuances, the textures, the smells, all Mm -hmm. the intangibles, all these things. You feel the energy. It's palpable. And then when you go to an opening and the artist is there, you get that extra energy, too. So it's a really special experience that I, I wish more people would capitalize on because as artists we want you there we want to talk to you at the shows yeah. I mean, we, a lot of us are introverts but we want you to come see and enjoy our art. like we create it we spend a lot of time on it and mm-hmm. then we put it up and you know when nobody comes it's kind of like oh you know like is my work not valuable anymore like yeah. not worthy and, and this is as somebody that does this for a living and it's been doing it for decades i still have those periods 
where I question myself, where I question my worthy. And mm -hmm. I say, is my work not good anymore? Am I not doing the right things? And I have to recognize kind of all these other things going on in the world and whatnot. And so I think yeah. we need to find ways to bring people back and kind of reinvigorate that gallery scene. Because the other yeah. thing is, is there's not a lot of brick and mortar galleries anymore because the cost of operating yeah. a gallery is so high. And so many yeah. people do shop online or people do want to purchase prints and things that they can get from different stores for, you know, 50 bucks. And, I, and I'm not knocking on that because if that's your budget, then that's your budget. And, and I have work at Bed Bath and & Beyond and at iCanvas mm -hmm. and Great Big Canvas. And I deal with some of these canvas distributors. So, no, I understand not everybody has the budget to get the large original that they want. Mm -hmm. But if there's an artist in a city that you live in or that you're going to be visiting, go experience their work in person. Because a lot of times people buy mm -hmm. my work sight unseen. And when they get mm -hmm. it in person, they're like, oh, my God, if I had known this was it, I would have got it long ago. Which right. is kind of like, you know, right now, like, shit, I got to get back into doing these fucking gallery shows and, and this – circuit of, of jury shows and i just stopped doing them because the overhead the cost of operation mm -hmm. were more than i was making at the shows but what i do tell artists is that that shouldn't necessarily discourage you like if i had the capital to do it i would have still been doing it but no. that discourage you even if you don't make the sales at the show because as jason said i have had people in fact one of the sales that i had a week ago it's somebody mm -hmm. that saw me at Art San Diego back in 2016 and wow. now just decided to come buy one of my original pieces. So yes. what happens is when you do these shows, even if you don't have the sales, is you're planting the seeds and mm -hmm. you need to keep watering those seeds day after day, year after year. What happens if you have a farm and you don't water your crops for a year? They're going to fucking die. And that's what happens. Like I've been in this art scene for a long time. And I was thinking earlier today, there are very few artists. There's only a handful of artists that I can count that are still doing this thing that, were, that I was looking at like 15 years ago. Right. And yeah. you're one of the artists that I've, I, I think I met you probably around 2016-ish or 2017-ish. Mm -hmm. And when I saw a post from Woods Real Estate, I had not known that you had a show there. But I saw the picture of the work in the show, and I said, I know whose work that is. So <laughs> it's, an, it's an interesting thing. Yeah, no, for real. Like, and, and, and you're right. Like, the, the overhead to some of the, the shows, man, it could be dizzy, you know. And, and I just got back from a show in, like, um, in Arizona, man. And it wasn't, it wasn't, like, a bad show, but it's nothing that I would have known had not gone, had I not gone there, you know what I mean? It was more put together with like, it was art, but it was also like a lot of like crafts and different things. And I was just like, oh, you know, I was kind of taken aback because I'm, I like doing like fine art shows, you know, where the focus is on the fine arts. And there's a lot of retirees. And I mean, they were enjoying the art stuff and I got fortunate, but like two of the originals that I, you know, ended up selling on the show, they were to like, um, to, to like tourists, to like somebody who was visiting. And I was just like, whoa, so what is that telling me about this particular, not Arizona as a whole, but this particular show? It's probably yeah. just not the right bag for me. You know what I mean? But I, I need to go and see it to know like, yeah, I'm probably not going to do this one again. I'm, because I ended up probably putting out more than I ended up bringing back. And that's the line I have to judge. Sometimes I'll do it twice. But with that one, I know I was like, nah, you know. I kind of judge that, and it was a lot of people. But you know, you judge it by like booth visits and and interactions and and print sales. So like when you say, Michael, like if somebody's not picking up a fifty, sixty dollar print, or I have sticker packs, man, twenty dollar sticker packs. But I'm not moving sticker packs, and kids are asking for stickers. I'm like, okay, this might not be the show for me because it, thank you. And I have people saying, please come back. We hope you come back, and I'm like you're not even supporting though, but thank you. Like, but you know what I mean? You, I don't know. I mean, cause I, I, they know my art was like really different and I appreciate it. But sometimes you have to just say like, uh, I'm not in the business of just, you know, losing money. This is, you have to do the one, the shows that are like, um, I'll say that are just more advantageous for you. I had to get out of San Diego, yeah. move my art around. And then I found a really nice, 
you know, following up north and I'm in LA and stuff. So, and I love San Diego, but you know, I have to like do shows in different places and just keep planting my seeds and seeing where that audience is, you know. I, I agree with you. And I'm kind of running into the same thing where I'm realizing I, I do love San Diego and I love the galleries that I work with here, but San Diego as a whole is probably not my market. I need to start finding other cities. Now as a big time introvert with Tourette's and coming off my traumatic brain injury and not having a lot of resources, it's really hard for me to get out and find other places, but I'm realizing more and more that if I want to grow and build this sustainability, I need to start finding galleries in other cities. And as you mentioned, because I have several galleries, Yes. When you have several galleries, other galleries want you. People always want what is in, what is successful. And mm -hmm. with the circuits, the, the jury shows. So for those who don't know, a jury show or a juried art show, it's essentially, and this is the traveling sort of jury show that we're talking about. It's these shows that you can submit work for. And it's usually like three-day events, two-day events. And there's a tent and you come hang up your work. And sometimes there's regulations for you needing a tent or your display a lot of times you need to have your own insurance so you can get insurance. And there's a number of resources you can do that. I recently came across a company actually that specifically is for artists. So it can allow them to get their certificates of insurance that they need for the requirements for these fairs and festivals for cheaper than it would normally be. And you can get like a policy for an entire year for like $350 or something like oh, that. Cool. So if you do a bunch of shows, it can definitely be worthwhile. So who knows, maybe we'll get them to be a sponsor for the show. <laughs> but uh, cost for these events at the average level, I would say for, uh, and let's, let's mention a couple of them. So in San Diego, I find the ones that are good are the uh, Lohe Art and Wine Festival. I like that one. Mm. I like the one, what is it called? Uh, Festival of the Arts, San Diego Festival of the Arts. That's a good one. Then you have the ones that are put on by Art Reach. And that is the Mission Federal Art Walk or the Little Italy Art Walk. I think they call yeah. it now. Maybe Mission Federal doesn't sponsor it anymore. They also have one in Carlsbad. They have one in Liberty Station. And then, so all of those events are generally in the range of like $450 to $550 for a 10 by 10 booth or something like that, unless they've raised the prices. Of course, you can get double booths, quadruple booths. Right. And then you also have the accessories. You have transportation costs. You have your help costs. You have getting your work framed costs and all those things. So you're going to need to factor those into there. Mm -hmm. Then if you step it up, you have events like Art San Diego, which is an event where... I think they just had that one, didn't they? What's that? I think they just had that one. They did. That was... Yeah, a, the, the convention we, center, right? Yeah, and that's moved around a couple times. Mm -hmm. At first it was in Balboa Park. Then they moved it up north closer to um the fairgrounds and yeah. they were saying, oh well you know it's going to be better traffic there because it's further up north but for that event in 2016 mm -hmm. i spent sixteen thousand dollars on a Whoa. booth just the booth just the booth and, but you know what? i had grown up without money without a lot mm -hmm. of resources and i had watched that fair for a number of years and i said one day I'm going to do that show and I'm going to do it right. And so even though I definitely did not make my money back there, I'm thankful that I did it because I can say that I did it. I allowed myself to get a suit. I got a suit for the first time in my life. I had two marquee walls with big five foot by eight foot paintings on both sides of the entrance. So anybody that walked in and out had to see my so yeah. I think that I was memorable there. And like I said, the person that bought my work a week or two ago, she saw me at that event. But at the event, I didn't really sell anything. And it's probably because, you know, maybe I need to look at my price points and stuff like that. But I got at least a nice little piece of paper over here, a little award that because <laughs> I was a spotlight artist for the event. So, you know what? I got a, I got a $16,000 award there. <laughs> wow. That's like you pay like that's like the gallery size booth. six. I had two like 10 or 12 foot walls plus oh, yeah. a 10 by 20 booth. Oh, that's huge. Wow. So, yeah. but now I, I have that. Up. But you got to learn these things. You know, you got to do these yeah. fairs and festivals, and you'll see a lot of the same artists at these things. And we'll kind of figure out what works mm -hmm. for you. But I think if I was going to do a moving forward, it would be with somebody like you, Jason. It would be with another artist, and we would find a way to work off of each other so yeah. that we attracting the traffic because that's the key because once mm -hmm. you can get a couple people to stop 
other people will want to stop to know what the fuck is going on. Always. I always wow. think I have two or three people stop at my booth and are talking or whatever. It's like another person to come there, he'll listen to what I'm saying. And then and you're, you're exactly right. You know, when people see like interest or whatever, they usually draws in more people. So, yeah, I'm still figuring out the whole the whole show thing. I just try to figure out what's really advantageous. And, and I like to go where the art's appreciated. So that's what I found by doing some of these shows. It's like when I show up, there's people that are really coming and like, oh, thank you for coming so much. But they're not just thanking. They're really posting something and bringing friends or getting commissions after, you know. So it's always a learning process. That's the biggest takeaway I can get from doing any show or any process or any interaction is just, you know, figuring out how to do it better the next time or figuring out what the demographics are because each show is different. So, like, some things I hang for shows here, I'll hang different, you know, up north and hopefully and I'll start getting out of Cal outside California a little bit, see some of these other states and see what I know some artists that, man, they're, they're going as far as like Chicago, St. Louis, and I'm just not, not physically like there yet, but I mean. Some serious transportation costs for that. Exactly, exactly. But they say that like it's worth the trip for them. But I have to equate time. I have like daughters in college, so you know it's a it's a balance, man. Yeah, yeah in in regards to what you were saying a second ago too, is that as artists we kind of learn along the way, and we all have areas mm -hmm. where we excel. We have our strengths, but we also have our deficiencies. And so I addressed mm -hmm. some of my deficiencies. And so when I came to your opening, we were mm -hmm. kind of talking about that, and I was saying, well, hey, I have these opportunities here, and I can help you with this. And you said, you know, well, you know, I, I do a lot of this research on the gallery. So I'll tell you what, all when I see one that I think is good for you, I'll just go ahead and direct you there so that it'll save you some of the research time. And these are the things that artists can do for each other. You can kind of work off of each other. And like, even with my gallery, I'm not like, oh, you know, I'm threatened that my roster spot's going to be taken. The right. day after the show, the, I came to see you at, we were talking about how you were interested in the gallery that I show at. And the next day I sent them a long text message with the shot of your work and said, Hey, I think that this artist would be good for the gallery. And this is why I think they would be good. Oh man. I really appreciate that, bro. You solid, man. I, think, I did send it to you, right? I, I meant to send it to you. Sometimes I'm not paying attention though. And I forget what I do. No, that's, that's solid. I think you did. I, that's, I just, you know, you're genuine, man. And that's, that's the, the plus side of like the whole thing where we're talking about like other artists are not your competition. You know what I mean? Other artists are, can be like your, one of your best resources, you know what I mean? Support <laughs> because it's, it's hard putting your stuff out there and nobody, no artist wants to hear no or, or the rejection or, you know, you go somewhere and you don't make what you, put into it and stuff, but you have to just keep elevating and, and understand like we're doing what a lot of people wish. I hear people all the time like, I wish I used to draw in high school. I really wish it. I say, hey man, just go get you a sketchbook. If you don't do anything else, do it for you. Get back to that love of just making lines. Buy a watercolor set, you know. People ask me how I stay, you know, um motivated and stuff. It's like shit. You what I found in life, man, is anything that inspires you. It could be a movie. It could be for me. I could just go to Barnes and Noble and just go through the graphic novel section, and I'm all fired up to draw for some reason. I think because of my love of going to a comic book store as a kid or something, you know. But some people like like I, you, we have to find ways of, you know. I'm getting off topic on, but like the creative blocks and stuff. But other artists have have helped me in many ways, like to break creative blocks, to to do some things. Like you say, I, I definitely will, um, will look at the galleries and stuff that I've already come across. I think your work would be a good fit for it, man, because, you know, your work's amazing, bro. You know, don't don't get dismayed. You know, San Diego sometimes is just a slower, slower market, you know. They show up, but sometimes it's a little bit slower than other ones, man. But you got something special, brother. Thank you. If, if someone was looking, um, I know we, we – a little over an hour. I mean, people are listening and they're looking to find your art or find out where your next gallery is going to be. What's the best way of getting more information? So for me, um, 
Best resource would just be my website. It's all one word, originalinkart.com. Just type it together. And the Instagram, I usually, anything that I'm going to be showing at it or, um, you know, anything upcoming, I usually, I'm big on Instagram. I usually keep my website upgraded and I'll keep my Instagram upgraded. My website is really lacking right now because I'm just getting off my show season. But like, this is the time I'm about to go and start putting all my latest originals and upgrades. And that's one thing I envy you, Mike. You stay on top of all that social media and your website looks good. I just, I struggle <laughs> in that in the in the web market i'm trying to get better because people really say do you have a website and i'm like yeah but you know it's not updated you're gonna see some prints but i don't have my latest you know and i wondered like how many sales am i actually missing by not having this original on there you know because i do yeah, see the traffic but i'm a neurological nightmare and that's what i'm always thinking about well, if i don't post this on every platform then guess what i'm gonna lose out on a sale but what I'm learning right now is actually that sometimes in pulling away and creating that desire, it allows mm -hmm. things to breathe. So like as I moved on to OnlyFans as a new form, and by the way, I am already 59% after only a week. But I told you, blow up, man. <laughs> as, I move into, as I move into a new platform, it's allowing me to kind of keep Instagram and Facebook more PG, but it allows me yeah. to kind of shift time and energy there. And so what I'm trying to do now is to kind of really look at each platform for mm -hmm. what their value is. So I'm giving the right energy to each one because it's like wow. feeding a, a bad relationship. But uh, mm -hmm. one of the things that you mentioned, the last thing that I want to ask you about is, is your background's really kind of cool. So nice. you are self-taught. And I think in a future episode, we want to get into the importance of art education. Like how important is it really? Can you do this without it? But you are self-taught you your time in the navy was a big influence on you and then okay. also if i read correctly and, and i've heard the stories it was your wife that really kind of gave you the push and said hey you need to do this yeah yeah my wife is um she's not easily impressed and so when i got out of the navy you know we were we moved in together and i was telling her because all we knew was like you know just surface stuff about each other and so i was telling her i like to draw and she was like, you can't draw, boy. And I was like, I would draw, you know. And so I took a pen, and I had, like, a Batman comic, and I drew Batman. And she sat there and watched me, and she was like, that is so good. You really can draw. And I was like, I told you. She was like, and I, but she just wouldn't stop. She was like, no, you really can draw. And I was like, well, why are you so amazed? She was like, you drew that in pen. Like, you can't erase a pen. And I was like, damn. But after that, you know, she started showing me, like, some of the, you know, jury shows. Like, she made me go just look at an art walk. And way back then, it was spread out. But just seeing other artists, it was like, okay, so planning to see in a couple of years later, you know, I had already been drawing for a little bit. I went to another one, then I applied, got into an art walk, did it, did horrible, but did it. But it, she just always, always, always kept telling me, keep pursuing it, keep doing it. And to what you were saying, Vinny, starting off as an artist is hard because you don't have that confidence but then when I returned to artwork with like a new style, I remember we were on a block and this lady came and looked at one of my pictures, man. And she was just like, I love this. And she had an English accent. And then her and her husband left and they came back and it was like pretty large size. And then when they walked out my booth with that picture, the whole block of artists was just like, oh, you know, so I inspired them. And then once you get that one thing that, and that built my, and I was like, I can do it. I can do it. I, I just sold a nice size original, you know. So, what? So, how much does your wife uh, make off of each painting? <laughs> how much do I? How much does she give me? <laughs> uh, the, I make the sales, but she controls all the money, man. I'm just and that's even something I'm really even trying to move more into is just letting her because you know her price points for some of my stuff is like really really high. So we kind of meet each other in. I try to tell her, look, um, part of my job is to make my stuff kind of, you know, affordable, where it's still lucrative for me, but affordable for somebody. And But then you can have work that really is priced up out there. So what, what I'm doing now is kind of separating what my real pricey work is and having that, like, and, and it's kind of some of the collage. Some of the collage takes so long that I just can't have the same price point as I can with, like, the mixed media bear with the acrylic and stuff. So... But she controls all that. We work on it together. But yeah, she 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 pays me a little little commission of stipping. 
It's always good to have a good art dealer. And, and you're so right too. The pricing is such an interesting thing because that's another thing that you and I were talking about because I'm dealing with the same thing. My work is about struggle. So the people that connect with my work, my audience is oftentimes people that are struggling and sometimes financially, which means they may not have the resources. Right. So it's like I want to value my time, my energy, my work, my experience, but I also want to keep my work accessible to people. So it's it's kind of an interesting thing to navigate as an artist. So I'm sure that we'll have some talks in the future about pricing too. And uh, I think that the wife, the support from the wife, it's so important because sometimes we just yeah. need someone else to water us. Yeah. We've never been watered before. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's why it's important to, to support artists, to nurture other artists, because I think that we're all born artists. Many of us just have it conditioned out of us by life yeah. and experiences and people that are insecure in their own pursuits. So they try to project that onto us or even friends and family that may want you to succeed. They may project their own insecurities onto you. So sometimes oh, maybe yeah. your family holding you back. So I'm, I'm grateful that you have someone in your corner pushing you forward and trying to raise those prices because I love your work. I love seeing your work and I love all the things that you do. Hey, thank you, man. Likewise, likewise. I, I think you're right too. All of us have some kind of artistic ability, no matter whether, whether it's writing, whether it's dressing nice, you know what I mean? Interior designing, whatever it is. But like you say, as a kid, sometimes the things that you grow up witnessing or getting, you know, constantly told you get away from. I was the kind of kid that drew all the time. I was in my room. Saturday morning cartoons, I go through a 500 pack of like typewriter paper in like a week, just drawing, sketching. So then when I got in the Navy, I got away from it. But when I returned to it, it was like I was actually just kind of returning to what I already had left to do. So I'm fortunate to reconnect with that because like you said, I know a lot of people, I have some friends and all my friends from like junior high or elementary school that follow me on like Facebook, they're like, wow, I still have this picture you did. Or, Man, you're still doing it because they remember like I was just sitting in class and sketch and stuff. So it's kind of cool. And then I know some friends that used to draw and then, you know, life happens and you get your job and stuff, or whatever. But at least I'm hoping that I'm hoping that they're at least still just doing it for themselves, you know, because it, it, if nothing else, it brings you peace. man. It does. And I'm excited to see all the things to come from you. And I'm excited to do more with you. And we're excited to have you on the podcast again, hopefully in the future, Jason. Most definitely. I appreciate you both, man. It's an honor. And yeah, we, we can definitely um, get together, Mike. We're going to do some things like because We're both in San Diego, so we can make something. I, I got a couple ideals, so I'll, I'll run some stuff by you for sure. Time to make stuff happen. Yes, definitely. If you don't like the culture, you got to change it yourself. So You have to. You have to. You know, we are the culture <laughs> when it comes down to it. So let's just let's put in and, and, and put our own spin on it. Well, thank you guys thank you. For, for listening. Uh, please subscribe. We're on all the major platforms out there. Watch us live on YouTube. Uh, that's in the show notes. You'll find us Instagram. right there. Huh? Instagram. Oh. You can follow us on Instagram, too. Instagram, too, right? So we're on all the platforms right now. So anyways, subscribe, share it, just like we talked about, artist to artist. I mean, person to person. If you have someone, you know someone that has a love for art, have a young kids that are basically drawing right now that want to basically hear about the game you know what please please share this podcast with them thank you guys for listening please subscribe please share and go tell your friends <laughs>